Sure. And it's important to track money, right? Mm-hmm. I think uh, everyone has a goal to retire one day, right? No one wants to work until the day they die. I, I don't think that's a goal of many people to say, I want to work until I die. Uh, Tim Ferriss presents an idea here of, quote, the four-hour work week, which, boy, did I have some opinions on this. <laughs> well, but <laughs> first, I just wanted to say, I think Firefly 3 is a great intro into this because this this book talks quite a bit on money and how it's actually money's not the end, right? It's just a means to do something. So we all have our own individual goals, what they look like, you know, what we want to do. And I really like how he described it. He said money is multiplied in practice. It's, it's the practical value, right? What uh, multiplied by the number of W's is what he says. Number of W's you have control of in your life. And the four W's are the what, the when, the where, and he calls it the with whom right and if you're able to control those things times the amount you know you make i guess is what he kind of describes it as then you're you're sitting pretty good and he brings up this great example of someone working 80 90 100 hours a week making 100k and it's like oh that whoa you know looks great on paper right looks absolutely everyone's like oh 100k that oh yeah sounds great on paper then he brings up someone who works 4 hours a week but makes 40 40k And you ask, who makes more? Well, I phrased this wrong. Who makes more? Obviously, it's a guy making 100K. But if you take in his multiplier, right, if you say, okay, well, if you're, you know, 100K over 80 hours, is, I think it comes down to something like, oh, shoot, I want to say 25 bucks an hour, I think is what it averages down to versus the person working four hours every week for 40 K averages out to like being a hundred. I make a hundred an hour or something. So I think that's where the, who makes more comes in. Someone have to check me on that math, but uh, essentially what you end up with is a lot more time, right? You end up with your, your budget isn't money. It's time when you run into these types of issues. So the book really just dives into this concept of the new rich and it's what he describes as oh i fly all around the world and i just outsource everything and uh you know i have personal assistants that take care of a lot of stuff for me and i automate everything i can up until the point that i can't and then i'll hire someone but not until it's fully automated do i hire someone to do the task um but really it's i think it starts with challenging the status quo as he describes it uh he really says And honestly, this one kind of threw me off a little bit. He says, having an unusually large goal is an adrenaline infusion that provides the endurance to overcome the inevitable trials and turbulations that go along with any goal. So he basically says, like, throw smart goals out the window, like come up with the biggest goal you can think of and then just go after it. He says, (laughs) and then he he, he just kind of dumps on realistic goals, unfortunately. He says, realistic goals, goals restricted to the average ambition level are uninspiring and will only fuel you through the first or second problem, at which point you'll throw in the towel, which I get for a lot of people. I can absolutely see that, but I don't think it's a reasonable goal to say, I'm going to walk up, you know, I'm going to go out and walk on the It's like, whoa, 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 hang on, fine you got to take your steps to get there, right? You have to take your steps, but don't make your goal so small that you get bored. And I I think he brings up this point, um, the mediocre effort, a mediocre goal will warrant the mediocre effort, which I did like. And then he brings up after challenging the status quo, bringing up these high ambitious goals, he compares, he basically introduces a brand new concept called dreamlining. And so instead of goal setting, he introduces dreamlining. <laughs> Why? Uh, okay, Tim, you can tell me. I will listen. Um, he says, and this is where he brings back essentially smart goals. So he talks about, you know, goal shift from ambiguous wants to define steps. Uh, the goals have to be unrealistic to be effective. Yes, I said that correctly. They have to be unrealistic because of that ambition level. If you don't have the ambition for it, if it's not a big enough goal, you're going to put in that mediocre effort. And then it focuses on activities that will fill the vacuum uh, when work is created, when when real work is removed. Uh, So living like a millionaire requires doing interesting things and not just owning inevitable things. No, enviable. Yeah. Enviable things. Um, 
So he says, don't create five-year goals, don't create three-year goals, create six-month goals and 12-month goals. And really where I, where I think he's going with these goals is, and when I say goals, I, I don't even want to call them goals yeah, the way he describes them. Yeah. He, it's like traveling. And he kind of describes traveling as a goal, which doesn't sound like a goal to me. It's, it's like, I, I want to move to Asia is kind of one of his things. He's like, I'm going to go to Japan and do this or I want to work over there do whatever um and it's like wait hang on that's not a goal Tim but okay fine uh so dreamlining fine I'm just going to describe it as goal setting it's just a fancy word for it you can kind of tell what my opinion is starting to shape into for this book I will say the one practical piece of advice I really liked was progressively challenging yourself to step outside your comfort zone. This is the one thing I really took away from the book that I thought was actually, it was like the shortest little section on it, but it basically had a uh, action item in it that described, hey, there's a direct correlation between an increased fear of your comfort and getting what you want. If you're able to be more uncomfortable and you're able to step out of your own box, basically, then you're not going to be afraid to get what you want, I think is what it boils down to. Didn't know if you had anything you wanted to add in there. No, that's a, there's, there's a lot of psychology around that. So I'm just going to say, I agree. Okay. Fair enough. And I really liked one of the action items it, he had, he kind of throughout the book, he just kind of has actions. He kind of gives like a little lecture, a little spews a bunch of words on paper and then gives like a, Oh, this, you, you should do this. And, one of them really struck out to me because it was very weird. It, it was maintain eye contact with a stranger until they break eye contact. What is this? Some kind of like jungle dominance game here? What is he playing? I don't know. I don't know. I have no idea. Uh, but basically, he says if you're confronted, this is his advice. If you're confronted about it, say, oh, you look like an old friend. It's like, <laughs> okay f- fine fine tim fine 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 um t- <laughs> i'll leave that as what it is I, you can take if people listen to this podcast want to go out and uh test that one out and let us know how it goes <laughs> i would absolutely love to hear how it goes because i i think <laughs> I think that would warrant a lot of uh, aggression from someone else if you're just giving them a stare down. <laughs> yeah, it's actually it's actually one of Bo Burnham's jokes in his first 2013 special. So that's exactly where I went to. It's literally a comedian just lampooned that already. <laughs> uh, man, so some of the advice in this book, uh, take take at your own risk or some of the action items do at your own risk. I have a feeling uh, that you'll be going over <laughs> where you agree and disagree at the end of this. Yeah. Uh, so I, I said there was one important thing I took away, which was uh, pushing yourself to be outside of your comfort zone. There was one more, mm. I will admit, uh, and it's about increasing productivity and kind of describing what, what work is efficient and what, what's important. Right. You have to ask yourself, what is important? And after you've defined what's important, what you want to do, I, you know, this always comes back to autonomy, mastery, purpose, I think is what it always kind of boils down to. What you know, what do you want to do with your time? And for us, it's develop on our compose, uh, work on it. Do we love we love our content uh, as much as we say we aren't content creators. We do a lot of content. Um, but how do you want to spend your time? Mm-hmm. And really what I took away f- as one of the more important things here, uh, he says, doing something unimportant well doesn't make it important, and a task requiring a lot of time does not make it important. So, and, and specifically, that goes to something I think we've harped on before, which is the the bullet point right, right above that, differentiating effectiveness versus efficiency. And I will right. I will absolutely stand by absolutely. that that definition, right? Where effectiveness is doing the things that get you closer to your goals, and efficiency is performing that task in the most economical manner. Right. I mean, you can sit there and do work, do work, right? And just because you're doing it doesn't make it. It it, it right. It's. 
I'm not going to beat a dead horse, but mm -hmm. just because you're doing something doesn't mean it's the right thing. It doesn't mean it's, I don't want to get in the moral. It doesn't mean it's the most important thing yep. to completing the goal. Yep. Uh, and I think you and I have especially revisited, kind of revisited that as we've completed a, quite a bit of complexity. Um, but just something to keep in mind. And then he goes over Pareto's principle for everyone that's not aware. It's 80-20, 80% 80 of the result, 80% of the uh, result, yeah. result is from 20% of the action, 20% of the effort result yeah. is from 80% of the effort. Yep. Uh, so he does offer two actions, two shorter tidbits here. Uh, limit the tasks to import, limit tasks to, to the important to shorten the work time. So pick out, he, he as he goes through, uh, he says, pick out what's the most important. And responding to email, he describes as that's not important. He, he goes on kind of a media spiel a little bit, a bit later in the book, or I don't know if it was earlier, but he basically says, I check my email. I don't check my email. I'm always on the move and I don't check my phone. And I thought, how, how can you be running a business? This is crazy. How are you doing this? Well, of course, if you, you continue to read, which I did because I was just so enthralled with this book, he outsources, Tim outsources everything, like everything. First of all, he automate he automates it. So it sounds like he builds his perfect process, uh, as I say. It, yeah, right. Perfect. Yeah. Uh, he builds the process out and then he hands it to someone to manage and he has personal assistants and he has people he exploits in India for like four dollars an hour to do like all this work um but again there was an important kind of tidbit in here uh he, he starts with a story saying my assistant was he says quite literally my assistant is an idiot uh it took him 23 hours to do a task that should have been on in two or three and it was because of the abstract goal that mm -hmm. he provided to his assistant so mm -hmm. it's and i think it describes i don't know if we've touched on it in this podcast or where i touched on it work gives uh i think you and i were discussing this work you give work the amount of takes time, basically up the amount of time that you give it time you allocate it yeah. yeah so if you say give it back to me tomorrow it's going to be tomorrow essentially so if you say give me three hours and you provide a direct list of hey i want you to do x y and z and you explicitly state those goals or i don't want to say goals those steps to follow then it's pretty hard for them to deviate off course basically they just that means they just didn't do it they didn't follow it well and and setting expectations is important as well right, right. because if if i say hey uh book this interview right it should take right. you, you know, maybe 20 minutes on the phone to book it, you know, 20 minutes to find, you know, a place in my schedule and write it down everywhere and get everything organized and get the paperwork done and sent through. And it should take you, you know, maybe another hour to to confirm everything with the credit card and stuff like that. Right. And then. Yeah. Th so that that should be about two hours. That's it. That's it. Right. 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 And then if you set that expectation on hour seven, they should probably be scratching their heads like what's gone wrong. <laughs> right that's exactly it so he basically provides a solution with he says automate everything but make sure you can't just throw people at a problem thinking it's just going to resolve itself you can't do that yep. and i i completely i'll agree with that one as well um so in the show notes i do have his kind of towards the end he talks on the 13 he calls them new rich mistakes i i, I really don't like that new rich definition but Hence, okay. Uh, and I think where we get to, uh, th those are important. I'm not going to read them out. Okay. If you are interested, I would definitely check them out. As, uh, as soon as we get to formatting notes. them correctly. Uh, we guess, yes. Um, but my take on this book, so I actually had to research this after I listened to and read through it. Uh, I listened to it and I read it. And the first time I listened to it, I was like, okay, like, all right i kind of like that and then i read it and i said i do not like this at all so i had to do some research um and sure enough this lifestyle of working only four hours which i feel like i hardly even touched on basically what what the four hour work week means is automate everything outsource everything and let other people deal with it if it's an emergency guess what you're not going to be able to contact me call my personal assistant so it basically said 
wait, hang on. If you've just fine tuned processes to such a level that everyone else is taking care of it, you basically, basically automated yourself out of the job, which is great. Allows you to freeze your time up to do bigger, bigger and better things. But, uh, but then you're not doing bigger and better things with that. You're just, it's, you're, it sounds like he's not yeah. you're right. You're right. He's not, you're right. And so he, <laughs> I think he went on to write a blog post, which I didn't link saying, quote, this lifestyle is unsustainable. <laughs> I'm thinking, yeah, no, yeah, right. <laughs> of course. <laughs> like <laughs> after reading your book, I understand why. <laughs> and for that reason, I, <laughs> I'm gonna throw it out there. I really did not like this mm. book. I, I would, I don't, e- I, 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 I guess it's one of those into the one of those weird spots. I would recommend it just to say what do you think of this, so we can talk about it, and maybe that means it's a good book because it evoked some emotion out of me. Usually, I read a book and go, oh yeah, great, you know, that was a book, but this one just did not like, did not like it. And there were uh, a few important pieces to pull out, but really just not not my book Mm. not my book yeah it i mean there are plenty of other books where you can get the message to challenge yourself to step outside your comfort zone right like how many times has that been rehashed in different contexts you you don't have to read you know automate everything and outsource everything by tim (laughs) ferris to get that (laughs) i think we found a title (laughs) Um. <laughs> no, so I will leave it at that. I will tell you what. Uh, they did have a section. Man, I, maybe it's just these self help. Maybe it's all self help books <laughs> are like this. It, you ask at the end, what goals do you want? What goals yeah. do you have? What dreamlining do you want to do? Um. But man, I I I really think for us, <laughs> it's the uh, our compose suite. You know, we do dish on Google quite a bit, and I, I think it's unfair for them to just say, "Hey, we're pulling a service that we supported for," you know, say say it was even three years, four years. I y- you wouldn't get that with what we're doing, um, as Andrew said earlier, and I, what I will reiterate here. Uh, you know, we're here to probably do this until we. Maybe we will do this until we die. Who knows? Uh, but I think that just means more from us, bigger and better things. Uh, so if you guys are interested, uh, the first step is signing up for the mailing list. And then if you're even more interested and you want to sign up for an instance, you can check out ourcompose.com. But really, it, it we're around for the long haul is what I have to say. And with that... We hope you enjoyed today's podcast. Thank you. Be safe. And goodbye, everybody. See you all in two weeks.